the second half underway. Longhorns, of course, uh, scored first, and they've been the only team to score, although Texas uh, Christian doesn't look too bad statistically, as you can see. They're just about 30-some yards, almost 30 yards behind in total yards. They just don't have any points. As the kickoff gets the second half underway, Edwin Simmons is back, but he's not going to return it as uh, they put the ball in play. They'll bring it out to 20. Some of the highlights of the first half, of course, it all started Barry Warner, uh, the scoring on a big field goal. between a 48-yarder from Jeff Ford, who closes in on Russell Erksleben's record, and the highlight for TCU. Jared Daly on the receiving end of this, the freshman from Madison High School. Rascal back, sprints out, rolls to the right, lets it go. Beating double coverage is Jared Daly. A couple of plays later, Jeffries fumbled, and Texas was back in business. And here's the play that uh, resulted in that play. Edwin Simmons, great hit by Flan and Newton. Ball pops loose, and the opportunistic Russell Hayes falls on it for the Texas touchdown. Back to live action, first and 10 from the 20. And you're up to date as Hunter takes uh, the first carry, and it's a uh, pickup of about three yards. Kent Trammell making the stop as we get the second half underway. What's flatter? Pancakes for breakfast, the Texas West Estrogen Desert, or the University of Texas offensive effort in the first half? Make your pick. Fred Akers had to be less Ask than Fred. pleased at the half. Ask Fred. Second down and six. Two men in the backfield. Looked like a uh, little mix-up on what the count was. There's a little float pass. That's incomplete. That was intended for Hayes, the man who scored the touchdown on the fumble recovery. Yeah, you keep going for Hayes, but I keep talking about Everett Gay over here. The kid with a 37-inch jump, vertical jump uh, from Houston's Wheatley High School. Donovan Pitts suited up, not going to play. Fred Akers trying to rest his leg for the next two ball games. But this kid has got great speed. Third down, six. Ball still at the 24-yard line. Hayes cuts inside. Now he's a receiver. Is uh, Stafford scrambling to find one, and no one there. McCray, who did come back into the game, was the intended receiver there, but he couldn't get to it. It's going to be fourth down. That TCU defense, which uh, ended on a high note, as Texas was out of timeouts at the closing seconds. They had a ball on the three-yard line, couldn't score. They'll get the football back. John Telchik is in the punt. Jim Wacker. 56-yard average for Telchik. He had one of the first half. It was 78. You know, Telchik's interesting. The first time he set foot on this field wasn't as a football player. He was in the band. His dad is the band director at Kerrville. As he gets out a low kick, it takes a good Texas bound. Yeah, the roll will help the average because it wasn't that particularly good kick. Goes down to the 30-yard line where... TCU will have the football for the first time in the second half. On their own 30, first and 10. We're not going to see any rat. We didn't see it in the first half, and I don't expect to see any razzle-dazzle at all. Any flea flickers, any reverses, any halfback options for Jim Wacker's ball club. With a young team like that, when you take chances and you're going bad, they always have a tendency to backfire and miscue on you. David Rasco is the quarterback. He's been in there a whole way. The red-shirted freshman out of Houston Westchester. Well, I mentioned something about the redshirt situation. Texas players are listed by their academic year and not by their football year. Consequently, there is no such thing as a freshman redshirt on the Texas roster. The player who was redshirted last year is still listed as a sophomore. And uh, that is not the case at TCU. TCU and most other schools, that's a Fred Akers preference. He just uh, prefers to list them as their year in school. I guess they're all going to catch up to you in the end anyway. You can be a senior twice, somewhere along the line. And get inside to Jeffries. Jeffries got past the initial uh, defensive charge, but not the secondary units, as Ta Tony Tillman comes up to make the stop. David Little, son of the University of Texas Associate Athletic Director Bill Little, our spotter going right down and pointing out Tillman, but the play was really made by Richard Peavy, who came up on the force, and that left it easy pickings for number 11, Tillman. Tillman will get credited with the tackle, but Peavy uh, will get some stars in the coach's film evaluation. Jeffrey has to take the high pitch, and he's scrambling to make something out of almost nothing. He gained a couple of yards. Richard Peavy that time did make the tackle. The way that McKinney strung that play out and almost forced the fumble could have been an easy six for Texas, but Jeffrey has got those Eric Dickerson, John Jefferson, fat goggles maintained his cool there. Allard putting pressure. Breaks the tackle right there. 
So he changes his hands and wants to make sure that ball is towards the sideline in case he fumbled it would go out of bounds. They're down at five. Rasko going deep. Incomplete. That ball was intended for Jared Delaney, but it was overthrown a little bit. Tony Tillman was there on the coverage, and so we will have to exchange punts as the wave uh, comes to Memorial Stadium. One thing I don't like about the TCU passing attack, when they've been going cross field, but number two, they're running one-man patterns. they got to get a multiple pattern and give the quarterback an option of somebody underneath. Becker has to short hop the snap. Gets a good kick away. Metcalf. Takes it. Going to turn on some speed. No! The Horned Frogs won't let him turn on any speed on the far side. That looked like uh, number 49 uh, for TCU. Uh, Going to have him fed it on that one. Pitts. We made the stop. Pitts uh, grabbed on to Metcalf. Didn't let him get out. 10 to nothing is the score as uh, the second possession of the second half for Texas. First half, Texas possessed the ball 18 minutes to so TCU's just under 12. Penalties, TCU 5 for 63 yards, Texas 4 for 29. Uh, maybe a key in the game. We won't know till the old ball game is over, but might be when Texas couldn't get any points on the board when they had the ball down inside yeah. and the clock ran out on them. No question at all. That was very poor execution of the clock, not coming up with at least three points. And I'm sure Fred Aker spoke to his squad about that as Gay comes out to put to the near side. Well, they kind of had all their eggs in that one carry by Simmons, and when he lost yardage, they, they didn't have time to get lined up and throw an incomplete pass. Here's a real left. Stafford strung out, throws it back across the green. Wisely, well, maybe not wisely dropped. He would have gained about three yards. If, uh, if Hunter could have held on to that ball, he would have gained about three, but he wasn't going to gain much. Second down. That ball was strung out. Stafford was looking, and Hunter, of course, came back to help out, as all receivers and offensive players are supposed well, to do. One of the big things that's happened to Brett Stafford is the fact that not only is he more comfortable, he's avoiding making the bad plays. He does not look pretty. He's not a style, pretty boy type quarterback. He just wants to get the job done. Well, he's done the job since he has been in as a starter. Hayes in motion to the left. Stafford rolls left. The press rush is on, and bang, down he goes. Oh, my, an outstanding play by Garland Littles, the Quero, a sophomore. He was in on that play all the way. He's the rover back, 6 feet, 200 pounds. And being the rover back, he can do just as the name implies, pretty much play anywhere on the field. But what he does, he just slides and doesn't have to worry about pass coverage at all. Again, pressure by Spadlin. And a great individual effort by the sophomore, Garland Littles. But we have... Uh, the quarterback Stafford having to come off the field. He apparently has injured his arm. And he's being helped, uh, or shoulder, arm or shoulder. The way they're holding up, maybe it's the shoulder. Yeah. He looks like it's the shoulder. And he, the kid is in obvious pain. Boy, that, that really is a serious injury. For a quarterback, that's the right arm. And he's trying to hold it immobile. Maybe the wrist. Todd Dodge. Todd Dodge. From the Golden Triangle area into the ball game. Well, Todd, three-year letterman senior. Third has down. not been the fans' favorite here over the last year or so, but they better like him because they're going to get him for the rest of this one, it looks like. And there's a big power run by Jerome Johnson, the senior uh, fullback. Kevin Psycho Dean making the stop. And the next quarterback we'll see warming up on the sideline will be Shannon Kelly. The kid from Houston's Memorial High School. He's dressed into the role right now of the backup. That's well, fourth down, and so uh, Texas will have to kick it away. Tony Brooks, number As 15, we're all set 80. for a Telchik punt. Again, Telchik, a three-step kicker. Brooks back deep. He gets it away. No contact. Brooks will take it on about the 37-yard line, run out of bounds at the 39. That's where TCU will put the ball in play. We'll take a break. We've got 11 minutes, 11 seconds to go in the third quarter. Texas 10, TCU nothing on Home Sports Entertainment. It's times like those that I'd rather be sitting here reading the sporting news. Traveling around the league and reading the sporting news keeps me up to the minute on pro football. 
But I really count on the sporting news to keep me posted on all the other major sports. My schedule really keeps me busy. So when I want to get all the latest scores and stats, the stories on baseball, basketball, hockey, boxing, and more, reported on the scene by 40 feature writers, I go to the one sports source America has counted on for 100 years, the sporting news. If you subscribe now, you'll get the special 100th anniversary issue of the Sporting News, and you can also take advantage of this special half-price offer. Here's how. Call toll-free 1-800-253-1000. You'll get 30 weekly issues of the Sporting News for less than 50 cents an issue, a savings of one-half off the regular subscription rate. You can pay in three easy installments of only $4.96 each. Call 1-800-253-1000. That's 1-800-253-1000. All right, it's... Uh... Texas Christians football, the ball spotted on the 39-yard line. They'll have first and 10. We'll uh, perhaps get a word uh, from the uh, locker room on Stafford, uh, first opportunity. You can see it was a shoulder or arm injury of some type. First and 10. DCU certainly not out of the football game by any stretch of the imagination. They have not scored many points this year, but they're only 10 down. And they haven't turned the ball over. The exception of the one Jeffrey fumble, they've done a good job of protecting the football. Jeffrey protected across the 40-yard line for a two-yard game. Brian Espinosa and Blake Brauner on the stop. Rocky Reed, number 98, on the stop. Rocky Reed jumped in there late, as you heard the public address announcer in the back. On second down and nine, it's a short nine. There's the man I think you were talking about warming. No, that's not Chan. That's, that's Todd Dodds trying to lumber. His, yeah, he's just getting loose. He just was thrown in there at a uh, moment's notice. Nowhere to be seen was a receiver on that play. Texas plays man. And what I'd like to see TCU do are run more multiple patterns. It appears that they're running just a one-man fly pattern. Nothing underneath, nothing to occupy a safety and drag them out there. That ball, however, was thrown in such a location that you got to figure either, number one, there was supposed to be a second receiver, or number two, Jared Delaney, the only receiver was supposed to cut to the center of the field. One of the neat stories, number four flanked out to the top of the side, the senior walk on the undersized Sean Millsap, now a flanker. He's got a lot of speed, and he's going to go down the streak on the left side, and that might have been offensive pass interference. Yeah. They didn't call, they didn't call it. it. But you saw that receiver inside there, Je uh, Jeffrey. He looked like he was pushing the defensive player out of the way. It's a fourth down. But at least there, they ran a multiple pass pattern. For the first time, we see more than one white jersey out in the pass pattern. That happened to be the short man. Superbly covered, and you see his back there, Ty Allard. The pass uh, off, or the push off, was before we saw that shot. Eric Metcalf. Two-man hit him with a vengeance. Pick up the numbers. Got to give uh, Dickinson a little bit of credit on that one. Chuck Dickinson. Well, it'll be first down for Texas. Both teams trading punts. I got a prediction. Todd Dodge hits a couple of passes. All of a sudden, all these geniuses that boot him will be cheering because right now, he is the main man. We have no idea how long Brett Stafford's going to be out for. He may be finished. And I'm not trying to play doctor, but I'm saying maybe. So right now, the offense booth, Todd Dodge, the man of the hour for the Texas offense. An offense that has been far from productive this afternoon. First down, 10 to go. Well, as Charles Hunter told us, and as Fred Akers told you, they are not looking past any individual game. And that may be true, but at the same time, they aren't exactly playing as well as they perhaps can in this one. And that's not to take anything away from TCU, because TCU certainly is fired up and is doing a fine job. Eric Metcalf. Boy, the crowd, the electricity when Metcalf uh, gets the football is certainly in the air. That picks up just about all 10. You know, Ron Franklin is the conference play-by-play. -play. That's his favorite Texas football player. You know why? Where's number two on his back? The channel two. I had to throw that in for RF. This kid is going to be an All-American football player by the time it's all sentenced. And he came to Texas for two reasons, academics and the fact that he could run track. He's a great relay and long jumper. 12-yard gain. He'll try another one. Boom! Down he goes. That was uh, number 97, Kevin Psycho-Dean. Psycho was psyched on that one. 
he uh, was a defensive end, very animated type player. As you can see, after he makes a good play, he lets you know it. I don't think his elevator goes all the way up to the top. Well, some say that to play defense, it shouldn't. Second down and 12. Second down. So Metcalf gained 12, One lost ten. two, and it's second and 12. 9-13 to go third quarter, 10-0 Texas. And a timeout will be called and charge to Texas. So Texas now has two remaining. TCU has not taken one yet in this uh, half of play. Friday night, the Home Sports Entertainment cameras will be taking you live to Reunion Arena for a special treat. It is indoor soccer featuring the Dallas sidekicks. If you haven't caught an indoor soccer game yet on HSC, you're missing some really great high-scoring action. Some say it's the fastest game on two feet. Might be with us at 7.30 Friday night as the Dallas Sidekicks play host to the San Diego Shockers live from Reunion Arena. You know, we, we got to put one thing in perspective. Todd Dodge is the backup. He is not exactly chopped liver. I mean, he's the guy who was a highly recruited schoolboy, became the first Texas quarterback in schoolboy history to throw for over 3,000 yards in one season. No, he has had it. He had a tremendous, uh, of course, teaming up with his old Texas teammate Brett Duhon at Port Arthur Jefferson. They had quite a combination. There were some surprises when he came here, I guess, because he was a passing quarterback, and at that time Texas didn't throw the ball much at all. And uh, he's had a good career. So he won my admiration the way he handled all the booing early in the year. Second down and twelve. Dodges pass is caught by McCray. Oh, an outstanding catch by McCray. He takes it across the 50 to about the 48-yard line. Well, Todd Dodge throws a wound to Duck. That won't make any highlight film. The pass won't. The reception will. A wound to Duck. Rolls right. Gets the protection. He has both backs out there. Plenty of time. Ball bobs and it waves. And here comes the man from Smiley. One, two, I got it same kid who got his bell rung in the first quarter. He's okay now. 21 yards on that pass play. First and 10. A ball across midfield. Dodge. The pressure. Got him. Back to about the 42-yard line. Some of the crowd thought that Mitchell Benson dived in a little late. Scott Harris, the man who got him, though, the counted. And that's a big play for Harris because last week in the game, you and Ray Allborn did, he had a sure interception. He bobbled it, and he started to run. He saw a touchdown, saw him being a hero. And he dropped the football. Now he comes up with a big sack. Second down. And 20-something. What Wacker's able to do on this 5-2 defense right now, he's been able to turn his linebackers loose a little bit. He's playing a four-man front now, keeping one guy back. Another violation on Texas. And boy, did Mitchell Benson come through on that. He may get a flag thrown on him, however. And that's unfortunate because the penalty was going to be on Texas, and he may have thrown a second one on the... Uh, on uh, Mitchell. Brian Chester, the right guard, moved. Let's see if it's only going to be one flag or two. To say that Mitchell Benson is exuberant is an understatement. He is their answer to William the Refrigerator Perry. There's no question about that. He had 101 tackles and 29 sacks as a senior in high school. And it was a personal foul on Benson, so they offset. Here you'll see it. A little over anxious, my man, number 95. Dodge makes the snaps. It is the move right there by the guard. Whoa! You take that, take that one more time. Four, five, six, or I don't care. I'll fight the whole team. Well, and Dodge was even jumping in there to take on Benson, and that's a little mismatch. Dead ball, false start. Offense will now enforce dead ball, personal foul, defense. Wacker lets them please from the far sideline. Well, it all adds up to second down and 11. So they actually gained about, oh golly, about nine yards from where they started out when you add and subtract all the yardage. They give inside, and good running room, there's Darren Norris. Norris cuts outside of the 20. 15, he fumbles the football in the end zone. TCU football, it's a touchback. 
Oh, the fumbles are hurting Texas. Tony Brooks, the man who fell on that football after a good run by Darren Norris, but it wasn't good enough, was you, it? You could feel somehow, some way, that TCU was going to make something happen. They dropped off their 5-2. They started blitzing the linebacker Harris on that one sec. Here's Morris gets tripped up. He's the kid from California with sprinter's speed and a fullback type body. Low base, great strength in his legs. He's got a touchdown. Right, wrong. No, 97 Psycho Dean strips him of the ball. In the Horn Frogs, Terrence Brooks, Brooks, who makes the start today, comes up as a hero. Yeah, old Psycho really just slapped right at the ball and knocked it loose. A 48-yard run by Norris. That's one of those, it's almost like what they say, kissing your sister. Big deal, huh? 48 yards and you fumble the football. First down for TCU on their own 20. And that wasn't a question of Texas being lethargic. These guys are playing smash mouth football. They're playing like there's no tomorrow. This is their whole season. They upset Texas, they make their season. Rasco going deep, nobody there except for a good picked off by Texas and down by Tony Tillman at about the 42-yard line. That pass was underthrown. Once again, it was really only one receiver on that streak pattern on the right side, Keith Burnett. And Tillman picks it off, so that changes the momentum that fast. Bad execution, good theory. You get the ball on a big break from a turnover, strike while the iron is hot. Only problem, he didn't throw it deep enough. And once again, so see if Texas receiver. plays such great man-to-man -man coverage, you know, they have the Mossy Cades and they have Johnny Johnson and Jerry Gray and a host of other great defensive backs that this university has turned out. So Texas gets it back. They lose some yardage, but they got the ball back. First down and 10. Metcalf. Oh, look at those feet. He didn't gain much on that, only a couple of yards, but that was two more than he would have had. Garland Littles uh, brought him down. He just stopped like boom and then moved out to the left. So Metcalf with another carry. Second down and eight. Ball is on the 44-yard line. High formation behind Dodd. McCray. McCray brought down to the 41 yard line. At first down. We were talking to Fred Akers, excuse me, before the game. He said, This kid is not the athlete of a Harris, but he is such a great competitor. He said, He may be as good a competitor as we have in the entire Texas football program. And the kid got his bell rung early in the ball game. He knows that he's not going to give up that PT that all important playing time. Finds the seam in the zone and makes the catch. And we still haven't seen Everett Gay catch the football. Newton finally made the stop, but again, a first down. Again, Dodge drops back. McCray can't get to that one. That was a little bit down low in front. Okay, we've got an update on Stafford. He's out for the game. Shoulder injury, but they don't know how serious yet. SMU 9, Texas Tech 7. The second down and 10. Well, that's where you sent our spotter. Yeah, we so sent David. That guy has. Well, we sent David Whittle in a check with his dad about the same <laughs> time that our stat man got the information. <laughs> second down and 10. Great minds running similar patterns. Now, we knew we'd hear about it sooner or later. Hayes is wide left. And to give him the delay, Norris. Cuts back inside. He's short of the first down. He only picked up about five. Third down and five. Stacked up there by Paul Montgomery, a four-sport high school star out of uh, Brownsboro. Freshman. Scott Harris also, redshirt freshman. In fact, these guys don't have too many college credits uh, behind their name that are playing for TCU. They don't have a lot of guys that shave on TCU. <laughs> Third down and five. Pass rush, and he gets it away just in time. That ball is caught by McCray, but it is short of the first down. The pass rush caused him to throw it quickly, but really, I think you've got to give Dodge some credit because he found that receiver just in time. Uh, they were, it looked like they may have been trying to set up a tight end screen, but the official got in the way. Pass rush made him unload the ball, and of course, that meant the receiver, McCray, could not get far enough for the first down yardage, and so it's fourth down. 
And Akers is in to hold, and Ward should be in to kick. And he is. And Ward, uh, if he hits this field goal, which will, well, he won't get it up until another timeout. Takes a second. They got one left now. And don't laugh right now, folks, but that could be crucial having only one timeout. TCU can, can find himself in an excellent position to come back and, and make a football game out of this. Get a score here, tie it up with a field goal. Ward, if he hits this field goal, will have tied John Goodson for the single season UT record of 17. Uh, he is, at this moment, six shy of Russell Ertzleben's school mark of 49. You get Ertzleben, you got a leg ray, you have Ward. He's got a definite pro future. You know, it's interesting. Jeff missed his first three field goals in the Missouri game. And uh, nope. at a new hole, now they're going to change. Yeah, he got. He was a little upset too. See the look on his face. He's upset about that hole. Coach, thing. coach, it's a chip shot, man. I kicked five against Arkansas. Well, the win would have been slightly in his face, but the kick uh, and the kick would have been coming from about 50. So. Probably not a bad change. It's fourth down and a long two. Just about a full three, actually. Don't rule out a fake here. Don't rule out Texas trying to do something to shake them out of their lethargy. Slippery Rock, seven, Mansfield, six. Yeah, that's always a big one here. Slippery Rock wins. Cactus Fire has been getting that score out here for years. Seven to six for all those folks that had Slippery Rock and gave the points. Well, it's still fourth down, and we still haven't gotten the playoff yet. 5.46 to go, and they did call a, uh, well, delay a game penalty. That's just going to give you more room to punt. If he's punting, it doesn't really make any difference. In fact, it's better. Go fourth down. Well, except it takes away your chance more than likely for a fake. TCU gets the break when they get the fumble in the end zone. They give the ball right back, but Blasco's first turnover does not come back to haunt him. Quite a disparity from last week when his first three turnovers and the interceptions all cost him touchdowns. Kelchick's punt straight up in the air. and He's aiming for the corner on the far side, and he is going to come about as close as you can get inside the 10 at about the 8. So TCU with four field position but does have the football. They trail by 10 to nothing. Five minutes and 34 seconds to go in the third quarter. Greg looking here along with Barry Warner. There's Jim Wacker and David Rasko. Greg, this to me has got to be the key series for the, uh, the second year freshman from Houston's Westchester High School, David Rasko. They got to get some points in the board. You don't want to go into the fourth quarter with a big goose egg. Got five and a half minutes before the end of the quarter. I'd like to see him put the ball up in the air more. He was a little underthrown on that ball that was intercepted. But again, if he runs multiple patterns, he may have a shot at getting something with a man underneath, trying to clear out a clear out part of the field. 10 nothing, Texas. There you saw the score. Now TCU with a football. Rasko with his uh, Davis Jeffrey tandem backfield behind him. Gives the ball to Jeffrey. He's stacked up right about the line of scrimmage at the 10. Jeffrey's not been able to break much of anything. Thomas Aldridge coming in to uh, make the stop. Thomas a backup right end behind Blake Bronner. You know, like, TCU, I said not breaking anything. Longest run, really, for Jeffrey this year is 26. And there's the total rushing yards. And there's a semi-break by Bobby Davis, but uh, only actually about a five-yard gain. Davis has had some running room. Richard Peavy on the stop. Davis broke one for 50 yards against Rice. He may have fallen on the football. He'll be all right, I think. You know, what's interesting about the Texas Longhorn defense, there's always been a tradition of Texas having great tackles. I mean, from the old days when Darrell Royal coached them and they had... Uh, in the 70s with the McMichaels and the Brad Shearer and Doug English, uh, Kenneth Sims, uh, Tony DeGate last year. No great studs in the middle this year. Just a couple of workman-like guys. They got Llewellyn, that steel hammer, who's been injured, uh, the Adams kid, Espinoza, and they've really done a marvelous job. See how that left arm flapped out there? I think that's what he hurt. I 
said he had the wind knocked out of him. He may have, uh, same old thing, could be a shoulder. In any event, Davis comes out, and I believe Bradford uh, came in. There's a pass, Rasko knocked up in the air, incomplete. That was intended out on the flat to Jared Delaney, but Mike January got a hand on it and knocked it down. January's a good all-out athlete as far as football goes. He was a running back in high school, a top one, and a tight end as a sophomore and junior. Hands now, up. It's a drill they always practice. So important, though. Man's got his hands up and the flex the pads. Becker will punt on fourth down. Metcalf's going to have to run a little bit to get to that one. In fact, he won't get to it. And it is taken out of bounds uh, on the far side at about the 47 with their flags. That looks like uh, Big Ed Cunningham and Becker got into it a little bit. See if there is a call. Personal foul, the preliminary call, and it is called against Texas. That's the preliminary call. Same old thing. Uh, it's when it took place as to whether or not it was on the punt or a dead ball. We'll see. Fred Akers just... Uh, Staring a little bit of disbelief on that particular call. That looked basically like incidental contact was made. 10 to nothing is the score. Texas on top. They scored a 48-yard field goal and a fumble recovery in the end zone. A, one of their own fumbles, that we might add. They was recovered in the end zone. That all in the first half. And the football's coming back, so it will be to TCU's benefit. Wacker with a coach's clipboard with a series of plays, the numbers. Wacker, Bob DeBessy as quarterback coach, a number of others. It's kind of like a homecoming for them because uh, 30 miles down the road, they were the three-time NAIA small college champions. Let's see. Four, it was four times altogether. Two times NAIA. Yeah, two time, yeah, two two times, uh, uh, NCAA Division II. They were all both right down the road. Yeah, he's had tremendous success. That's why uh, you know the program will bounce back. Give inside for Big Yannick. That's uh, Mark Tips, his first carry of the game as he brings the ball all the way up to midfield, a pickup of almost 20 yards. The element of surprise, Tips is family a blocker. He's not noted as any kind of a runner. And all of a sudden, he first threw a good blocking up front. A little stutter step, but he just bounces to the outside, breaks one tackle. And finally, uh, they make the play for the back side as Aldrich from the defensive end spot makes the tackle. That was a 19-yard gain as the give inside is good for only a couple more. That was Tips again. Tips' longest run of the year up to that one was only six yards. Mike January on the stop. First now Tips is playing because of the injury to Bobby Davis. Second down and seven. Coming in with a play is Keith Burnett, number 84. Burnett has yet to catch a pass. What do we have Rasko's completion ratio for today? We'll check that in just a second. Seven down, second down and seven. Rasko's going to try one. It's it is intercepted and dropped. Intercepted and dropped. Eric Jeffries uh, had a chance at it. It was intended for yeah, number 85, Ricky, Ricky Stone. Stone. He should have caught it. But he didn't. His eyes had to get real big on here. Looks to the right, throws back to the left, and hits him in a bad spot, his hand. <laughs> Terrible spot. Ooh. Texas should have the intercept on that one. Well, he finally dropped it the second time. He had a second chance at it and couldn't hold on. It is third down and seven. Wide receivers on both sides. It goes inside to Jeffries, and he's very close to the first down, but appears to be maybe a tad short. Richard Peavy making the stop. They got to go for it here. There's no question, Greg. You're three and six on the air, 0 and six in conference play. You're not on the board yet. It's not even a gamble. Not only that, but your defense you know, uh, There's a refrigerator. Well. They're yep. calling the igloo. They may put him in on this situation. They're going to call timeout. 
Well, they're going to diagram this one, I think. Rasco comes over to the sideline. Mitchell Benson, who scored from actually his touchdown last week that you may have seen on the tees at the beginning of the show, was was not your little one yard run. He went in from five yards and he he held his balance from uh, he was hit and was going down at about the two, and he put a hand down uh, to keep himself from touching down. Then went on in. He did a pretty good job on that. You know the secret on that play, don't you? Wacker may have threatened to keep the kid off the training table for the rest of the semester unless he scored. All kidding aside, you got to be a pretty good athlete. Basketball player. You'll notice these, uh, these defensive linemen that uh, do play a little offense like William Perry and Mr. Benson, they don't tape their hands all up like the other linemen do. they got to handle the football. He's a bow-legged kid, too, as we take a look at Bevo. What a life, standing around at football games. Okay, here we go. First down yes, for Benson. And then, of course, the other thing we got to mention about that play, not only is Benson in there, but they also set up in the blocking formation uh, another beefy guy, number 79, comes in uh, for TCU and, and helps set the block. That's Laswell. It's a first down. Laswell is an offensive tackle, but they set him back. Now it's first and ten. Wow, well, offside tips was the carrier. You know, the thing about those plays, Barry, a lot of people are saying, wow, what a great idea. Why didn't they do this in the past in football? That sort of thing. Well, they've done it before. And it's, it's kind of a phase and a cycle that people go through. There have been running backs that maybe don't weigh 288, but uh, remember Mr. Johnson of Ohio State and the pros for a while? Yeah. He... He was a big guy. The difference is... Pete, I never him. missed a meal, Johnson. Well, but the thing is, you judge him differently. He's supposed to be able to do everything a running back is supposed to do. Uh, guys like Perry and guys like Benson aren't supposed to. They're only supposed to do little things. Sorry that I interrupted the official there. This drive started on the 8-yard line. First and 10 on the 8. Of course, uh, the penalty kept things alive when Cunningham messed with the kicker. First and 15. Yeah, the sack is on. That ball's loose, but he was down. He was down. He was down at about the 46-yard line. Mike January has played a fine second half. Was one of the people coming in along with Espinoza off the defensive line, and yeah. uh, we also saw Thomas Aldridge, number 97, on the play. They they were all contributing to the pressure and the McKinney the sack. got in there. Ty Allert, the whole host of people, and that didn't that didn't uh, happen just by accident. David McWilliams, the outstanding defensive coordinator for Fred Acres. Picked him to and chose his spot there. Rasco is 5 for 14 for 59 yards. Of course, now you knock off 10 yards on that sack from his net yardage. Overthrown. He had a receiver. There was about triple coverage, but Burnett was the only one back. And the ball was overthrown. Lucky wasn't intercepted. What well, TCU has not done with the exception of that one pass to Davis in the first quarter. They're not faking deep and sending a back out into the vacated area. If you're double and triple teaming, somebody's not home in the middle. And they have not thrown any tight end delays either. You know, we talk about that 5 for 14, which is now 5 for 15, but he, he isn't throwing easy passes, as you point out. He's throwing one receiver and deep, and those are hard to complete. Third down and 25. Yeah, they're just going to fake it and keep it and pick it away. As that was a good fake into the running back Jeffrey, but Rasco wasn't going to pick up 25 more than likely. TV and Jeffrey's teaming up on the tackle, and TCU will have to kick it away. Again, though, by the time that uh, Texas gets their hands on the ball, it'll be less than a minute to go. TCU has gone three quarters with nothing but a goose egg on the scoreboard. I punt. That cat's going to let it go in, but it isn't going to go in. And TCU downs it inside the 10 at about the seven yard line. Killing that ball was TCU's pips, and it will be first and 10 for Texas inside their own 10. They're going to put it on the nine yard line. Of course, the clock always in Texas' favor whenever you're ahead. The fact that they haven't had much of an offensive uh, uh, show doesn't mean a whole lot. Stafford, now they say bruised shoulder. Right. Well, that's that's good. That can keep him out for a week or two, but it probably would not keep him out for the rest of the year. Wouldn't it be amazing, though, if Stafford couldn't play and Texas subsets Baylor and A&M close to the Cotton Bowl behind the guy they booed here in Austin? 
Todd died. Stranger things have happened. Sure have. And nothing stranger than this game. We prepared ourselves for a blowout. You've got to have that disaster list of things to throw in to keep the telecast going. We haven't used them at all. This game has carried itself. Pitch back to Metcalf. He's looking for a hole. None there. Oh, none there at all. Pinching him in. Gerald uh, Garner Littles and uh, Philanda Newton were able to pinch that one off. They covered their positions and didn't react to any fakes. Philanda Newton's got to be one of the best names in, the, in college football. There's another guy that was a, quite a basketball player. He averaged over 20 points a game in high school. 6'3", 193. So Mitchell Benson, Philanda Newton, they both uh, averaged over 20 in high school and playing football at PCU. Second down and six. Give to the fullback. Short yardage, pick up maybe three. three. That was uh, Norris again, the 5'11", 199-pound freshman fullback from California. Ron Lewis making the stop from Copperless Cove. That's near, well, actually it's not far from Waco. It's very close to uh, Fort Hood. I know Fort Hood. That's why I threw that in. I was there once. 20 seconds to go in the first half. They say on that shoulder bruise with Stafford, they don't consider it serious, but he won't play today. Metcalf. First down, as he spun down across the 20-yard line at the 23. Garland Littles again on the stop. As we will reach the end, well, the clock has stopped, I think just to mark the ball. We've probably played our last play of the third quarter. But it definitely and helps when you're able to run behind an offensive line like Leon Manley here. Has Chilton gets all the pub, but guys like Chester, Jaton, and Stewart will get drafted in the NFL. We've reached the end of three, so there's timeout on the field as the teams change position. It is Texas 10, TCU nothing. The fourth quarter coming up right here on Home Sports Entertainment. 